Wow. That's too many distractions. Hey Bertie, let's go and see what's going on. Now looking through this delightful hybrid gladiolus, um, one of the parents must be Gladiolus delenii from South Africa. It's looking a bit battered now, but uh, I think it's gorgeous with this sort of yellow throat. But anyway, <clears throat> the object of the exercise is to have a look at this South African bulb, the Eucomus. Eucomus. Now, <clears throat> they vary in uh, size from little things to dirty great things and this is one of the latter it's probably one of the biggest of the uh, and most impressive of the eucomus now eucomus um, is from the greek you lovely and comus head of hair good gracious a lovely head of hair <laughs> some of us do have such thing and here it's referring to the sort of pineapple top knot on the flower. This one is Eucomus pole evansii, uh, a form of Eucomus pallida. And it has the most bold foliage of all the Eucomus, Eucomuses. And the flower stands well, well up above the foliage so you can see it very well. They have a tendency to flop onto their knees like those two, but I've had to do a bit of quick wiring up for the, for the other two remainer. If we come along here, I'll show you another. Now here's another with quite an impressive flower spike and bold foliage. This one is burgundy. I must say the insects do love it. The bees are busy on it. Sparkling Burgundy. Now we're standing up behind Sparkling Burgundy Eucomus so that we can get the benefit of these ginormous hibiscus flowers. They're sort of the size of plates, really. Warburton's Rose Moon. Each flower only lasts a day or two, but there are more to come. And my goodness me, they are ginormous. On the corner of this alpine bed is a plant from the Chaparral in California, which is loving the situation. And I've shown you this before, and I'll show it to you again. These are these tubular flowers favoured by hummingbirds. Regrettably, no honey hummingbirds here in my garden. But it is loving the full sun and the drainage. This is, uh, it used to be called Zashneria, but it's now Epilobium canum. And it is very happy here, a present from a, a great friend of mine many years ago who's since passed away. But here is a living memorial of him in the garden. A very, very strong privet smell has led me to this now very large, slightly weeping 
Chinese privet. There's a little bit of a clematis going through it at the top. But it is very uh, dramatic at this time of year when it's cascading its white scented flowers, which are uh, very attractive to the insects that are flying about. And this is called Ligustrum kihui. Always amuses me because ki is uh, who in French and who is who in English, kihui. But apparently he was a French botanist, Antoine Kiou. And next to this very large New Zealand tree called the Hoheria, Hoheria sextilosa, which is flowering like mad. Let's have a look. This is quite a hardy tree. It has little or no scent. It's the only drawback maybe. My goodness, it's smothered in flowers. Now next to it is another privet. This is a variegated privet, which is beginning to flower. And the person who described this one, or discovered it, and named it, called it Ligustrum excelsum superbum. So there was no doubting how he felt about his baby. It is quite present, I must say. It can form quite a big, big tall tree as it has here. Again, once the flowers have opened properly, they're going to be another magnet for the insects. Let's just go up here a minute. I uh, want to show you something. This, uh, first of all, this amazing copper beech called Purple Fountain. I put it there because it's weeping and yet upright, which is rather useful because it doesn't take up a lot of room sideways. And behind it, of course, it's this lovely rather exotic and nicely shaped small tree of an Albizia. This is an Albizia julibrissen, but it's slightly, I hope, smaller form called umbrella. And if you pick up these little powder puff flowers, they've got a very good rim of deep deep pink. So the whole thing is very elegant, I would say, and I'm hoping it's not going to grow enormous like the other albizia I've got by the Round Temple, which is ginormous. Right, Bertie's on the lookout, perhaps, for a squirrel. He loves chasing squirrels, even though some of them may even be imaginary. Now here are a couple of late flowering plants. This is a short-lived perennial, but it's useful for its very blue colouring at this time of year. From China, Strobilanthes. Atropurpurea, which means, of course, very purple, very blue. There's another one which I'll show you, which is not quite so blue, also from China. It forms an enormous bush, whereas this one dots itself about 
seeding away. I'm coming along here. This is the other Strobilanthes I wanted to show you. Massive, absolutely massive. An enormous shrub. And it seems to be stretching for about, oh, I don't know, three meters, 10 feet. It still has these same shaped flowers. As I say, not as blue as the other one. This came from the Himalayas I collected there. This is, I believe, Strobilanthes attenuata. A few ginger lilies for an exotic and jungly look. You can't beat this one. Hidaikim spicatum. However, it doesn't really understand the word boundary. So I have to be vigilant. But it's a very bold, very, very bold foliage and jungle with these spidery flowers. Another clump forming ginger lily, this time smaller and more compact. It's a, a good orange colour and the flowers are packed tight on the flower spike. Hence the name, this is Hidecium densiflorum in the form Assam orange. One drawback, if it is a drawback, perhaps in a border it is, that the uh, stems tend to fall outwards and then the, the uh, flower spikes go upright. This probably is because it grows on banks and this doesn't seem to matter too much there. In a border it might require tying up, but here it's on a bit of a bank so it seems to work very well. As we go back, Bertie's waiting patiently in the background. I look at these things that promise so much. The buds, the furry buds of the magnolia, Milky Way. The tree is absolutely covered with them. A treat for the end of March, but a treat for right now are the lovely flowers of the Hydrangea called white fireworks. Lovely. It's got a Japanese name. And I think because people find these quite difficult, they've often been translated into English. White fireworks. All right, Bert, I'm coming. I thought I'd finish by showing you this uh, other hoheria, which is beginning to burst into flower. And this is hoheria popolnia. There's a lovely sweet sm smell coming off it. And here is the piece de resistance. It's the lovely purple underside of the leaf gives it an added attraction with the white flowers from New Zealand lurking in the back starting to open is the ginger lily Hidaikim Tara big bold scented flowers